Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to use my enhanced runtime action and condition plugins. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so first, how do we download and install these plugins? All right, first you're going to go to my itch page. You're going to see packs. Eventually there's going to be a lot of them for action, runtime actions, and link conditions. And each one is going to come with a few enhanced runtime actions and possibly a new utility plugin. Like this one comes with a get layer info. This doesn't exist anywhere in PGM but it's gonna be a new runtime action for you to use, all right? I also go into a brief meaning of what I mean by enhanced, but I'm also gonna show you this in this video. So there will be a cost. Patrons get this for a pretty good discount. So if you want to subscribe monthly, you'll get these monthly packs for free on the first month that they're released. Another thing I'll mention real quick is that patrons get to vote on what pack I work on and release next. And so if you wanna say in the order that these things are releasing, then Patreon definitely has that option for you. So this by far Patreon is the best deal to get these packs. All right. So once you buy and download these, then you're going to go to your plugins tab in your project and you're just going to click add a plugin. Now I'm just going to name this. I'm going to do the generate one. So I'll just name this Baz uh, generate object. And then I'm going to go to load and this is where I installed it. And so you can see that this is version 1.1 or 1.0 and you can see down here it's 1.0. So you might wanna keep track of what my versions are doing. I'll make an announcement anytime I do a new one. I kept these separate so that I can update them separately and not have to update all of them. So I think this is the best way to go about it. But anyway, back to the plugin tab here, there's going to be some parameters that you need to set up first. And these parameters are gonna be used internally with the plugin. So these are gonna be things that you're only gonna set for the plugin only, you're not gonna actually use for your game. So for instance, the first thing you need is a common variable that you will never use in the game, and you need the default value to be negative 100, all right? This is so I can do stuff in the plugin, and I can have a variable that is connected to the project in order to do stuff with. So you're just gonna click on sample, and then right here, we're not gonna have a variable that I wanna use, so I'm gonna go to resources right here, and I'm going to add a variable, and I'm just gonna call this baz variable. And this way I know that this is going to be the plugin that is used. Now all my plugins are gonna require this setup. And so you'll have to just remember, and if you install one and then try to use it and it doesn't work, come back to your parameters and make sure that you have them set up correctly. The next thing that it needs is it needs an internal object. I need access to, a, to the game via an object that I can use whenever I want. So you're gonna to go to objects here. You're gonna create an object. I'm just gonna call this Baz object. I'm gonna hit okay, leave everything by default uh, for now. If I ever need anything set specifically, I will include it in what to do down, down here. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna set that to the Baz object. So Baz variable and Baz object I will never use in my actual game. These are just gonna be blank things for this plugin. Now, I already forgot to do one thing, set it to negative 100. So I'm gonna go back here and right here, set negative 100. All right. So going back to the plugin, the next thing that is sometimes a common issue when you're installing and updating especially is these numbers can get stuck. So what I like to do is every time I load this up, I just hit down and up, down and up. I bring it back to those values that refreshes it for some reason. These can just get stuck every once in a while. So just make sure that you have this. These are for performance. If you are experiencing some performance loss, then you are gonna wanna dial these down a bit However, these were very safe numbers, hardly caused any, any loss to me. All right, so over here we have the preview. Now, some people get confused that this is where they set settings, but this is not. This is just a preview of what the runtime action is gonna look like. And then I have the help real quick. You can refer to generate object runtime action if you have any settings questions, because this, for the most part, uses the same settings. And then you can feel free to use this commercially, and then you can feel free to edit these as well. So now let's go to actually use it. All right, so I have some just some objects here, a chicken, a board, and then a player. And we're gonna have a scene that has some different things going on. For instance, on the player layer, you can see I have the player, two chickens on the player. This chicken is on the above layer right here. And then I also have a menu scene, which I have an expanded board so that you can see that we can now reach menu scene objects, all right? So in the player right here under the attack, this is where we're gonna call it. So you're gonna add a runtime action. You're gonna go over to plugins and this is called Baz Generate Object. I wanted a short name and people said, why don't you just put Baz in front of it? And yeah, that made sense. So 
This is the Baz Enhance Generate Object. All right, so in most of my plugins, you're going to find these starting settings. It's gonna be select instance or instances using runtime action. Now, sometimes there's no need to have instances, multiple instances. Sometimes it only just needs to be the one or the self. So do take that into consideration, but most of the time you're gonna see something like this. And what makes this unique or enhanced in, my, in this case is that the target usually can only do it on the self. Well, I've now added ability to do it on an object type, on instance IDs, or all objects if you want. You can also do it on the parent and then the first locked object. That's the only instance we can grab, so that's the only option available. And so by default, you only can do self. Now you have these five other options. So for instance, you can see that some have numbers by them and some don't. If they don't have a number by them, then there's no other settings to fill out. If they do have a number by them, so for instance, this object type, then I would have to fill out the sub, the sub settings area of number one. And I'd either have to choose one of these, or if I leave it not set, then I choose the variable. So you can see that I kind of help you flow on how to use variable values, which is also what is enhancing these plugins, is that not only could you do the normal method of choosing an item, an object, but you can also have that number via ID, which is awesome. So you could constantly change the variable value during the game, but still use the same runtime agit action and the logic setup that you have. All right. So the other thing, there might be another option, for instance, in the object type, you need the ob object target. Are you doing the single instance, which there's only one in the scene, or are you doing all instances of that object type? All right. So you, there would be settings that you have to fill out. If you go to all objects, this is a really cool one. You can choose between, are you doing all objects only on the normal scene or all you, are you doing all objects on the menu scene as well? And then are you doing both? Do you want both the normal and the menu scene? And then even more specification is you can say what layers are affected, all right? So negative one is gonna be all layers, and then it, one and on is going to be your layers starting from left to right on your scene or your menu, because these will affect, this gets them from menus as well. So if you only want your HUD to have a generate object, you would select menu scene, and then if it's the most far left tab on your menu, you would just select one, and that would only affect objects on the HUD layer of your menu scene. So really cool stuff that you can do, and again, you have access to variable. So this you're gonna find in most of the runtime actions. If not, it's because there's a reason, and, and you'll just kind of, it, it's gonna be very similar, but there just might not be as many options for specific reasons. So moving along, you can see that this generally follows the same format as the normal runtime action. So for instance, generate object, you're choosing the object ID. It just has more settings. For instance, you can get the variable for the, in, instead of listing it as, right here, you can also change it dynamically through variable, all right? Starting action, default zero. This will eventually have a runtime action where you can grab the action IDs that you want from your objects. So. I wanted to add this in, even though the plugin will come a little later, depending on when patrons uh, want that pack released. And then this is a new feature in this one, for instance, this is an, again, an enhancement, is you can generate multiple of these objects. So this is an object count of how many you want to generate. So that's kind of cool. Probability, now you can use with variable, and then there's things like this. Uh, do pay attention. Um, this is another enhancement. You can actually generate it according to scene X, Y, if you want. Now, this will have some few caveats. For instance, it won't work on generations that are childed. And also the X scene, the X, Y is only for normal scene generations. So there are some caveats. I'll try to make those well known as much as possible. But you can see that there are some new features. Again, if you're choosing one, you'll have to set these settings right here. And if you're choosing two, you have to set these settings right here. And then if you're choosing center or locked, you don't have to set any settings. But um, one thing I wanna point out while I'm here is sometimes not all settings and use cases are compatible. And this is one rare example where that's the case. For instance, connection point. So let's say that I was to set a connection point of where I wanted this to be. Now, if I have all objects chosen, which I do, not all objects are gonna have that same connection point ID. And so that's gonna be a case where it's gonna be very hard to pull that one off. 
So you might want to just keep it on center or something like that. But you can see that you can uh, still offset and, and do these things. And I will be updating these and adding more features as I see the need come up. So definitely, you know, if you're a patron or comment below or anything like that, and I will consider extra enhancements if possible. All right. And then we'll have setups like this where you have zero is no, one is yes, and that's all you can type. So you won't get stuck or locked out of something. And so you could, these are just the general settings, the normal check boxes where you check for generate as a child, match the direction and things like this. Here's another enhancement for this particular one is to store the new instance ID into a variable. So if this is one, you would choose the variable to store, and then it's only gonna store a normal scene ID, obviously. And then it's also going to store the first generation only. So if you're, generation, if you're generating a ton of objects, it's only gonna store the first one. So for instance, with, with all of these settings set right here, on the center, we're generating the, let's just generate a chicken. And we're going to do both scenes right here and all layers, so negative one and all objects. I'm gonna click okay and play test here. And I'm going to attack. And you can see that these chickens generated, I generated one, and then the menu scene generated one. All right, now if we go back into there and we just say, hey, I only want the menu scene to generate this object. Well, you see that the menu scene is the only one that generated it over here. So that is the power of these enhanced runtime actions. If you have any questions, you can comment below or go to the discords and we'll get you figured out. That said, I'll see you at the next video.